Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome back to our Python and Matplotlib series. In this video, we're going to go ahead and understand how to create our very own bar chart. Now, before I begin, guys, I just want to notify you, I launched a brand new Python and Matplotlib course that's all about data analysis and visualization. If you're interested in learning a comprehensive understanding of Matplotlib, know how to customize graphs, modify colors, and create a variety of 2D and 3D graphs, including bar charts, pie charts, histograms, and more, that course is for you. You can get it for just $9.99. You can take a look at the comments section or in the information section of this video. If you're interested, definitely check out this course. Anyways, back to the video. So again, guys, we're making a bar chart today and we're gonna be using Matplotlib. So if you don't have Matplotlib installed already, there's two ways you can do it. Terminal pip3, pip3, install Matplotlib. That's one way and you can go ahead and install the module through there. Or if you're using PyCharm like I am, you can go to PyCharm, preferences, and then inside of preferences, guys, you can go to project interpreter and add your module Matplotlib down over here. Once you have Matplotlib installed, guys, the next step is to go ahead and import it. We're going to be using the import matplotlib.pyplot module. And since we don't want to type this out every time when we're writing our code, we're going to go ahead and say import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. All right. Awesome. Next step, guys, is to go ahead and figure out our figure. So again, when we're creating our chart, guys, we need to go ahead and create a figure. Again, we're creating a bar chart. So let's go ahead and say figure is equal to plt.figure. And inside we can pass in a figure size. Now for our pie chart, we need five comma five. In this one, I'm gonna go ahead and say fig size is equal to, and then you can't really see, but fig size is equal to, and in this scenario, I'm gonna say uh, seven comma five. All right, so the next step guys is to go ahead and for now, we'll just do plt.show. So we can see how our figure looks like. Go ahead and save this and run it. And there we go, we have a blank figure that is seven by five, fantastic. The next step guys is to go ahead and get the data for our bar chart. Now what I'm gonna be doing guys is I'm gonna create a bar chart which has students and their scores on the latest test, okay? So for that, I'm gonna have some data for names. I'm gonna have four names, Avinash, uh, Jacob, uh, whoops, Jacob, Michelle, and let's do one more, uh, Sally, okay? So I'll be nice, Jacob, Michelle, Sally, so four random names. And then after that, guys, we're gonna go ahead and create some scores. So let's say the scores out of 100, let's go ahead and say scores is equal to, and then pass in some data. So let's say I got 89, Jacob got 78, Michelle got 93, Sally got 57, okay? So these are our four scores, these are our four names. That is basically all the data that we need for a bar chart. Now, the way a bar chart works, guys, is you need to specify the positions of your four sort of data labels, Avinash, Jacob, Michelle, Sally. So to do that, go ahead and create another array and make it positions is equal to, and then just say over here is zero, one, two, three. All right, so we have names, scores, positions. You'll see where we use this in just a second. Once you have the data populated, guys, the next step is to use the plt.bar function. The bar function actually creates the bar chart for you, and that's exactly what we need to do. So go ahead and say over here, uh, plt.bar, and inside pass in your bar chart. The first thing it takes is your position. So where should every bar be located? I'm gonna go ahead and pass in my positions array, all right? And then after that, it needs a value. How high should your bar chart be? In this scenario, I'm gonna pass in my scores, all right? So plt.bar positions comma scores, that's gonna create a very simple and very basic bar chart. Go ahead and save this, run it, and there we go. We have our very first bar chart, guys, and as you can see, it looks fantastic. Now, the biggest thing I have right now is the width of these bars. So you can go ahead and give your bars a custom width by setting an attribute over here, positions, comma, scores, comma, width, and our width should be equal to, let's go ahead and just say uh, 0.5, all right? plt.bar, position, score, width, go ahead and run this. Let's take a look. Now we have our four bars sort of well arranged now, but one thing that you can immediately notice is these tick markers. These tick markers don't really tell us anything. If I'm looking at this bar chart, guys, I don't really know where is Avi, where is Michelle, it's just numbers for now. So what we have to do, guys, is actually set the X ticks of our bar chart and correspond them to our four names. The way you can do that, guys, is by setting plt.xticks, and then over here, you're gonna pass in your positions variable, all right? And as you can see over here, position zero, one, two, three is exactly what we want, and for every position, we wanna pass in our names, okay? So plt.xticks positions comma names, all it's gonna do is for every position we specify zero, one, two, three, that's gonna replace those numbers, so zero, one, two, three, with Avinash, Jacob, Michelle, Sally. So go ahead and save this, run it, 
And now we have Avinash, Jacob, Michelle, Sally. Fantastic. Now, another thing you can do, guys, is also change the color. So over here, position, score, width. There's also a color attribute. You can say color equal to whatever you want. In this scenario, I'm going to go ahead and say green. Go ahead and save that. G for green. And now I have a nice green bar chart. All right. So now we have one bar chart. But what if we wanted to add multiple bars underneath the same name? What if we were comparing two different tests and we wanted to see how the student did compared to the previous test and the new test? Well, to do that, guys, it's actually very straightforward. We have our scores data over here. Let's go ahead and create another scores variable, scores two. And let's say I improved, I got a 95. Jacob also improved with an 85. Michelle went down with an 87. And last but not least, Sally improved with a 78. So these are our new scores. And now we also wanna plot these on the exact same plot. So what we can go ahead and do, guys, is say plt.bar positions blah. We can do the exact same thing, plt.bar, pass in the same positions. Um, except the way you want to think about it now is since our width is 0.5, the new positions of our second bar chart is going to be the current position plus the width of our first bar chart. Okay. So it's going to be plt.bar positions plus 0.5. Okay. And then after that, you're going to pass in scores two and then a width of 0.5. So again, the way you want to think about it, guys, is when you're plotting the second series of bars, the way you want to plot them is you want to correspondingly plot them right over here. So you shift it all by 0.5 so the middle point is right over here and they'll appear right next to each other. So go ahead and save this, run it, let's take a look. It says, okay, small cannot concatenate list, not float. Let's take a look, positions plus 0.5. So one problem that we've accounted for is you can't automatically add a value to an array. So what we're gonna have to do guys is say positions two is equal to 0.5, 1.5, 2.5, and 3.5, okay? So we have our second set of positions, guys. Go ahead and say positions two. Go ahead and run it. And now you can see we have our chart. Now, one big problem that you can automatically see, guys, is the distancing of our sort of labels. So you can see that Avinash, Jacob, Michelle, Sally, they're right next to each other, which doesn't look that good. So what we can go ahead and do, guys, is actually change up the width just a bit. So let's go ahead and make the width of this 0.3 the width of this 0.3 and now take a look and there we go. So right now we can see two bars guys, but let's go ahead and remove the middle gaps between the two sets. The way we can do that guys is by making this a difference of 0.3. So 1 point, 0 0.3, 1 0.3, 2.3 and 3.3. Okay. So again, just to recap guys, all we did was we changed the width to be smaller from 0 0.5 to 0 0.3. And then to account for that difference in width, we also changed the position values from 0.5 difference to a difference of 0.3. So go ahead and save that, run it, and now we have our bar chart looking fantastic. So we have our green bar, which is our previous test, the blue bar, which is our new test. One thing that you can automatically see, guys, is the positioning of our X ticks. We have not accounted for that. Currently, our X ticks are accounting for the green value. They're not accounting for the new middle point. So let's go ahead and create a third position for our X ticks. Positions three is equal to and it should be the difference of 0 plus 0 0.3 divided by 2. So in this case, 0 0.15, 1.15, 2.15, and 3.15. All right. The way that basically works, guys, is 0 is that, uh, 0.3 is that. So the middle of that is going to be 0.15. Go ahead and save that. Put positions 3 over here and run it. And now you're going to go ahead and see Avinash, Jacob, Michelle, and Sally are perfectly aligned. Fantastic job, guys. That was the basic gist of creating your very own bar chart. Let's go ahead and finish it off with a title. Let's go ahead and say plt.title, pass in latest test scores. All right, fantastic. And now we have our beautiful title up top, and then we have the test scores of four students. Fantastic job, guys. That is how you create your very own bar chart. Again, if you want to learn how to make this chart and several more, as well as customizations and learning how to add data with NumPy, definitely check out my brand new Python and Matplotlib course. You can get it now for just $10, so I definitely suggest checking it out. Thank you so much for listening, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.